Good morning. And um, yeah, the edges of the bench are looking decidedly messy again um, after building the last few things. Um, just had a couple of kits arrive today and uh, I thought I'd have a look and see what I actually got. Um, doesn't look very complicated, but uh, unlike a lot of kits, this one seems to have... Um, I seem to have taken a bit more care of the, uh, the microcontroller, it's an Atmel, um, and uh, they've actually put it into a bit of polystyrene. It's probably not um, static safe um, polystyrene, but uh, it's got to be better than, uh, better than nothing. And um, quite unusually, you also get a full set of instructions, um, albeit in Chinese. And uh, let's have a look, let's see what it is. Um, looks like temperature and frequency, Celsius and... Uh, right, okay, so... Um, Yep, it doesn't give you uh, much information. Um, yeah, the Dallas 18B20, I believe, is the thermal sensor. Um, obviously, the Atmel is the microcontroller. Um, well, I suppose the thing to do is to uh, to put it together and uh, see what happens. So, uh, I won't discard the instructions, I'm just going to put them gently to one side because uh, the picture is actually a very good way of making sure you've got everything in the right place and it gives you some idea of uh, which way around to put things in. So, uh, let's give it a go and see what happens. <clears throat> Right, now this is something you don't often see in a kit. This is actually a resistor network. Basically it's a lot of resistors with a common point. Um, doesn't matter if it's common negative or common positive because they are just resistors. And uh, that's a, just a parallel group. Um, looking at this board, um, it's a very nice... Um, reasonably thick, reasonably smooth edges, so uh, it, it's been produced quite nicely. The silk screening is uh, very clear, which is it's nice to see. And um, yeah, I suppose just uh, go ahead and start with the smallest components. Um, let's have a look. Um, lowest on the board will be the resistors, obviously. Um, so it says, right, so resistors, let's have a quick look, and our 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, which of these are 4.7Ks, uh, that's 4, 7, zero. it's very hard to see these colour codes, um, but again, there are five of them, and uh, the other resistors you get, there are only two of, so uh, yep, yeah, it makes it a lot easier to figure out which ones are which and which ones go where. So um, let's start then with just these resistors. This is quite handy that they're all the same. So. Um,
Okay, so here we have it all wired up. Um, we have the voltage going in here and the meter is connected to the 5 volt output terminal. So what I'll do to warm it up, um, I'll just uh, hold the soldering iron close to the temperature sensor. I almost forgot what it was called there. And as you see, the temperature's rising. Now, I'm not actually touching the sensor because I don't want to uh, put a couple hundred degrees of uh, temperature. But as it reaches the 40 degree set temperature, and there we go, we now have the uh, 5 volts coming out of the um, out of the socket here where the meter is connected. And uh, let's keep it up, keep the temperature on a little bit longer. Okay, so that when I move that away, we'll clearly see as the temperature goes back down to 40 degrees, that voltage will disappear. And there we go, back to 0.1 of a volt, um, which could just be stray pickup. Um, Let's, let's get some alcohol in the lid and just uh, let's just uh, cool it down and uh, obviously as it evaporates you should get a drop in temperature there yeah. And there we go, the evaporation's taking place and it's now sort of settled down. It's still falling, which uh, obviously means it hasn't all evaporated. And I would actually say that's probably closer to the actual temperature in here. Especially with the uh, the lighting above the bench that obviously you can see casting the shadows on the green mat. Um, you know, if I turn it right up, you know, you'll get even more heat, but uh, the camera will complain. Um, so let's just uh, turn it down so the display is a little bit clearer. As you see, it's it's. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's, it's sort of settled around about 23 degrees. So, yeah, I would say that was probably the most accurate it's going to get in here. Um, hmm. So, quite a nice little display there. Oh. Proviva. It's a kit. Um, you can use it for all sorts of things, obviously, if you want to monitor, say, the temperature of a... Uh, piece of equipment um, or the temperature inside a case I would imagine that you could remote mount the Dallas device but as you see as soon as I put my finger on it temperatures rising let's see if I take my finger off will it drop back down yes it does so uh, yeah that shows that that's working um, yeah a nice simple little kit something to uh, to build up um, total build time in real time was uh, around about 35 to 40 minutes, so easily a lunchtime project. Um, definitely complexity level one, uh, beginner level. Um, there's not really anything that you, you would struggle with here. Uh, so, um, yeah, by all means, um, if it's something you fancy building for whatever reason, then um, there you go. If you want to put it in the fancy case as well, um, then you can mount it on standoffs and uh, you know just have the display visible through the through the, a window in the front of the case so that will give you uh, quite a good uh, sort of uh, remote display 
not quite sure how high a temperature that device will read without looking at the um, at the spec sheet but obviously you know you can set it to 99 degrees so uh, it'd be interesting to uh, actually look up the specs on that uh, on that device um, so that'll be worth looking through later yeah so if you want an accurate um, thermal uh, control thermo uh, display then um, this seems to be the way to go and as I say for a fiver um, can't really go wrong um, I can see one of the ideal applications if you are monitoring the internal temperature of a piece of equipment would be to actually have that attached to a heat sink and this attached to um, a transistor uh, which would control a fan um, which would run say at 12 volts or 24 volts whatever the fan voltage was and you just use the uh, the transistor to switch on the the fan itself so um, yeah a very good uh, very good little switching board actually um, I might incorporate that into uh, into one of my existing power supplies just to um, keep keep it a little bit cooler Hmm, worth thinking about. Thanks very much for watching and listening to me waffle on, and um, hopefully I'll see you for the next video. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.